Welcome to a Legendarium special about Emperor Decius, the persecutor of Rome's Christians. In this episode, we will talk about the long and slow rise and swift fall of Emperor Decius. Quintus Decius Valerinus was born around the year 190 AD to a wealthy landowning family in the small village of Budalia, located in the Balkan province of Roman Pannonia. The young and ambitious Decius married the daughter of a respectable Italian family named Herennia Capricenia Etruscilla. They had two sons named Herennius and Hestilianus. Unlike several of his predecessors, like Macrinus, Maximinus Thrax, and Philip, who rose in the legions, Decius had little, if any, experience in the army, probably because his family connections allowed him to thrive in the civil service. Yet this is all the more striking since Rome saw frequent wars during his life and many emperors fought in the legions. Instead, Decius served in the civil service and became a distinguished member of the Roman Senate. During the reign of Emperor Maximinus Thrax, he served as the governor of Lower Germany, and during the reign of Emperor Philip, he served as prefect of Rome. In an odd turn of events, when Emperor Philip offered to step down during the Second Dacian invasion, Decius stopped his resignation, arguing that Philip stepping down would do no good during this crisis. Perhaps pleased by Decius's loyalty, Emperor Philip gave the longtime civil servant and politician a mission to stop the Dacian invasion. This he did with extraordinary success, and it is not known if Decius's soldiers genuinely wanted him to become emperor or if Decius's victory led him to imagine himself garbed in imperial purple, but the army acclaimed Decius as the new emperor. He then led the Danubian legion south to claim Rome herself, and Philip marched north to crush the traitor. After a battle near Verona, Decius defeated and killed Emperor Philip before claiming the imperial purple. With the troublesome Danube frontier secure, at least for now, Decius hurried back to Rome. He became the latest in a line of emperors who originated from the Balkan provinces, a sign of Rome growing less important in imperial politics. After consolidating power, Emperor Decius turned his efforts towards several building projects which show that Rome, even into the crisis of the 3rd century, was still capable of carrying out large-scale infrastructure development. These included repairs on the aging Colosseum and building the Baths of Decius. To link himself with the glories of Emperor Trajan, Decius even adopted the name of Trajanus to link himself to the emperor who conquered the Danubian frontier over a century ago. However, Decius is remembered more for his persecution of Rome's Christians than his military campaigns. Although Decius did not name Christians specifically in imperial edicts, it is clear for whom Decius wrote them. Some historians believe that his dislike of the Christians stemmed from the persistent rumor that Philip was a Christian. Perhaps the recurrent crises rocking the empire led Decius to believe that the old gods demanded devotion. For certain, Decius's dislike of the Christians was shared by many of his countrymen. Christians refused to attend pagan festivals, which formed the center of social life in Rome, and this led many Romans to believe many Christians to hate the human race. Since the Christians addressed each other as brother and sister, this led some Romans to wonder if the Christians practiced incest. And since the Christians mercifully rescued infants left to die on garbage heaps and raise them as their own children, this led other Romans to believe that Christians in fact ate the infants and cooked them into the holy wafers and wine that they ate at their services. Perhaps with such rumors in his ears, Decius declared that all citizens had to not only sacrifice to the Roman gods, but to observe pagan rituals, something that Jews and Christians had refused to do for two centuries. 
Every Roman had to either sacrifice or burn incense at imperial temples and receive a certificate proving that they did so. Since they could not worship pagan gods, most Christians bought certificates from corrupt officials to avoid persecution. If officials came by asking for copies of the scriptures, priests simply gave them lesser works while keeping the scriptures safe. However, a few devout people refused even that and faced torture and execution. These included Pope Fabianus of Rome, who died in a Sardinian tin mine only a year after being arrested by Roman officials. These deaths, though they were the exception rather than the rule, only strengthened the Christian movement by giving Christians martyrs to revere. In 250 AD, Decius returned to military service when he led the Danubian legions to the Balkans to confront the Goths, who crossed the Danube River into Roman Thrace and attacked the city of Philippopolis. There the Goths allied themselves with a renegade governor named Titus Julius Priscus. With the support of the Goths, Priscus declared himself emperor. Unfortunately for Priscus, when he failed to deliver enough loot to his new allies, they murdered him before he could enjoy the benefits of imperial office, and this proved catastrophic for Priscus's political career. Decius then took the field against the Goths and at least temporarily fended them off. However, the Gothic chiefs would not stay away long. One summer campaign in Rome meant more loot than ten such campaigns against rival tribes to the north. In 251 AD, while fighting on the Danube frontier, Decius learned of a second usurper, a senator named Julius Valens Licinianus. Unlike Priscus, Valens had some support in the Senate and with the people of Rome. However, his rebellion and he would be put down by Publius Valerian, a future emperor appointed by Decius to rule Rome as prefect, an office he himself once held. Decius did not bother to return to Rome to deal with the failed usurper, for his concern lay with the Goths, led by a fearsome king named Niva. Despite being defeated in 250 AD, Niva joined another tribe called the Carpi, who crossed into the Roman province of Dacia. Determined to stop Niva, the emperor marched with his oldest son Herennius to the Danube River. Unfortunately, both Decius and his son failed to repel Niva and his combined army. They fled to the city of Oscus, where they joined the governor of Upper and Lower Moesa, Trebonianus Gallus. During the ensuing battles, Decius became entrapped in a swamp and died at the Battle of Abritus. Decius thus became the first Roman emperor to die in battle against a foreign enemy. Trebionus Gallus assumed the imperial purple and quickly made peace with the Goths. Upon his return to Rome, Gallus made Decius's younger son his co-emperor, but the boy died shortly afterwards in the Cyprian Plague. This terrible disease helped to turn Rome's unsettled succession into the crisis of the 3rd century, which rocked the empire to its core. Fortunately, after the emperor's death, the persecution of Christians ceased only to be reborn under Emperor Diocletian about 50 years later. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.